A titration curve is a graph which shows how the pH of an asset solution changes as a base is added to it, or how the pH of a base solution changes as an acid is added to it. Here we'll consider the addition of a strong base to a solution which is initially a strong acid. The base is in the burette and the acid is in the beaker below it. The strong base we'll use in our example is 0.1 molar NaOH and the strong acid we'll use is 0.1 molar HCl. We have added 25 milliliters of 0.1 molar HCl to the beaker. A pH meter will be used to monitor the pH of the mixture in the beaker below the burette. What we'll do is draw a graph of the pH in the beaker versus the volume of NaOH added to the HCl in the beaker. We'll start with the pH before NaOH is added at all. At this point, we have 0 moles of NaOH present and 25 milliliters or 0.025 liters times 0.1 mole per liter equals 0.0025 moles of HCl. Because all we have in the beaker is 0.1 molar HCl, the hydronium ion concentration is 0.1 molar, and the pH is equal to 1. Now we'll open the stopcock and slowly add 10 milliliters of NaOH to the beaker. Watch what happens to the pH. As a result of adding 10 milliliters of NaOH, the pH rose to 1.37. It can be shown that when 10 milliliters of 0.1 molar NaOH is added to 25 milliliters of 0.1 molar HCl, that we've added 0.001 moles of NaOH to 0.0025 moles of HCl. So the acid HCl is in excess. This explains why the pH is still quite low at this point. Now we'll add more NaOH to the beaker until we get to a volume of 24 milliliters of NaOH added. Watch what happens to the pH. The pH at 24 milliliters has gone up to 2.69. Notice it is starting to increase at a faster rate. Calculations show that we've now added 0.0024 moles of NaOH to 0.0025 moles of HCl. The acid is still in excess, but not by as much as it was before. Therefore, the pH is higher. Now we'll slowly add just one more milliliter of NaOH to give us a total of 25 milliliters of NaOH added. Notice how quickly the pH rises here. The pH at this point has gone all the way up to 7. Remember if we assume that we're at 25 degrees, a pH of 7 means the solution is now neutral. This is a special point in this titration. It's called the equivalence point. At the equivalence point, we added 25 milliliters, or 0.025 liters, of 0.1 molar NaOH, which is 0.0025 moles, to 0.0025 moles of HCl. The equivalence point is defined as the point at which just enough base is added to neutralize all of the acid. The NaOH and HCl will completely react with each other with no excess of either reactant. The coefficients in the balanced equation are all 1, so we see that 0.0025 moles of the salt NaCl is formed in this neutralization. Like all salts formed from the neutralization of a strong acid with a strong base, NaCl is a neutral salt. At the equivalence point, there is no strong base or strong acid remaining. All there is present is water and a neutral salt. And that's why the pH at the equivalence point of all strong acid strong base titrations is 7. After the equivalence point, we'll slowly add just one more milliliter of NaOH to give us a total of 26 milliliters of NaOH added. Notice how quickly the pH increases here. Notice that it went from 7 all the way up to 11.29 with the addition of just one mil of NaOH. 
We can see that small changes in the volume of NaOH make big changes in pH when we're close to the equivalence point. At the 26 milliliter mark, we have added 0 0.0026 moles of NaOH to 0 0.0025 moles of HCl. So the base NaOH is now in excess, therefore the pH is above 7. Now we'll add NaOH until the volume of NaOH is 50 milliliters. Notice the pH continues to go up, but not as quickly as it did when we were close to the equivalence point. The pH after adding 50 milliliters of NaOH to 25 milliliters of HCl is 12.52. At the 50 milliliter mark, we've added 0 0.005 moles of NaOH to 0 0.0025 moles of HCl. The base NaOH is in excess enough to make the solution quite basic, hence it has a high pH. Now we'll take a look at a strong acid strong base titration curve and review its main features. Because we're starting with a strong acid, the acidity typically starts out high, so the pH starts out with a low value. For example, in 0.1 molar HCl, the pH is equal to 1. When we add the base, the pH goes up gradually, but when we get near the equivalence point, the slope of the titration curve shows a sharp increase. In a strong acid strong base titration curve, there is a long section of the graph that is almost vertical. Right in the center of the almost vertical portion of all titration curves is where the equivalence point is represented. It is important to remember that the pH at the equivalence point of any strong acid strong base titration is always equal to 7. This is because at the equivalence point, the strong acid and the strong base completely neutralize each other. And all we're left with is water and a neutral salt. So the mixture is now neutral and the pH is equal to 7. After the equivalence point, when the base is in excess, the curve resembles a reverse reflection of what it was before the equivalence point. Notice the curve has sort of an S shape. The best indicator for the titration depicted by this curve has a pH range that is somewhere on this almost vertical section. So any indicator that has a pH range somewhere between 3.6 and 10.4 would be suitable for this titration. So theoretically any of these indicators would be suitable to use for this titration. We see that the volumes corresponding to these two points have very little difference in value. So even a drop or two of the base would be enough to change the color of any of these indicators. Although any of these indicators are suitable, the best indicators are ones which have the pH of the actual equivalence point within their range. Rhomphamol blue, phenol red, or neutral red would all be excellent indicators for all strong acid strong base titrations. Because the pH at the equivalence point of all strong acid strong base titrations is 7. And 7 is within the ranges for these three indicators. The volume of base required to reach the equivalence point of any titration can be determined by drawing a straight vertical line down from the equivalence point, like this. The value on the x-axis where this line hits the axis is the volume of base required. We can see that in this titration, it is 25 milliliters.